Welcome to a painting how-to video, and in this video we're going to focus on washing or shading our miniatures. And so what I have here is a beast stag -a boy and you can tell I've took some good time on him. He is painted, you know, I've touched him up nicely. It's not a lot of painting outside the lines. There's some, but not a lot. His colors are all real flat. They're real kind of, you know, one one tone on him, but they're all there. They're all it's all nicely covered, and he's ready to get a little bit of depth to him. You know, bring out those facial features. You know, bring out the uh, detail on this model. This is one of the Beast Snagas from Warhammer uh, by Games Workshop. And so what we're going to do is we are going to add a wash to him. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to get a brush that's kind of kind of thick and fluffy. This is not a brush you're going to do detail painting with. You see here, like I put it on him, you know, it's it's splooching out kind of quite a bit. We are going to use this brush to put the wash on our model. And the reason why is because we want to pick up a decent amount of that wash from our pots here. And so we're going to start off with, actually, I'm going to start off with this bile tan green. And you'll notice I have these sitting in this do not tip it over things. Because I'm looking through this camera viewfinder here and it's a little precarious. We're going to play a game called don't dip the dirty brush in the wrong pot of wash. And if I do, I'm leaving it in, you'll get a C. Let me know in the comments, take a guess. Do I do it in the video? <laughs> take a guess. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna kind of start putting this on him and just kind of letting it flow into, I'm gonna put the green on his skin. So it's gonna give some depth to his skin. It's gonna kind of sh shade it up a little bit. It's going to kind of settle into those recesses, and it is going to add some depth there. And that's what I want. I want some depth here. So, like, places where he's got, you know, bumps on his skin, like, you know, muscle outlines and things, I want to kind of get a little bit of this wash in there. And it's going to dry in there and give him a little detail. You notice I dip into the pot, and I kind of press the excess up off on here. You will notice today I am using the Citadel washes, and I, I, I mentioned in my videos, I don't know if you might have heard it before or not from me, I do like those Army Painter washes quite a bit, so you might be saying, okay, why are you using the Citadel wash if that's what you prefer? And the answer is, I think these are better if this is your first time doing it. So I'm demonstrating to you with the Citadel washes, because they're, they're a little easier for the first time. I just think they're not as nice overall. And so, see here, now you see there I got a little bit, I'm going to call that too much wash on there. So I'm going to kind of wash some of his other skin over here. I'm going to kind of make sure my brush is nice and clean of that wash. I'm going to go back and I'm going to kind of suck it up. See how it kind of sucked it up there? So there's not quite as much on there. We're just going to put it somewhere else where he's got some other skin over here. And so we're going to do that for all his skin. I'm going to come back probably and touch him up a little bit while I'm not looking through the camera. And then we'll see. We'll watch that wash uh, dry on him here as well. Okay, so we're going to uh, just kind of do that a little bit with him really quick before I put this color away. And let's switch over to that Agrax Earthshade. And I want to show you here a little bit of how you might use that Agrax Earthshade. So I am rinsing out my brush of the file tan green, and we're going for the Agrax Earthshade. Now for this, I've got a lot to do. I've got his his weapon to do. I'm going to do everything else in Agrax Earthshade. So his skin gets the file tan green. Everything else is Agrax Earthshade. So I'm going to put it on his metal there, make that look nice and dirty. I don't know of an orc that cleans their weapons too often, so we're going to make sure that, you know, this kind of simulates that grime that settles into the recesses of anything. Like, if you have, like, an old chainsaw you've used a while or something, which is not too far off from what this guy is actually using as his weapon, right? You might have a similar experience. We're even going to paint it on this stuff that might look like it's not going to do much. 
like here, this brown, it will just give it a nice little subtle, uh, subtle nice little depth to it. Definitely going to paint it on this red here. This is maybe like a squig hide or something. So I'm going to follow my squig hide recipe. I'm going to shade it up with this, and then I'm going to come back and dry brush it with that screamer pink. We are going to get it on those little spikes, just because they're way too white. Put on his spike there. We're actually going to get his belt and his pants as well. His pants, his boots, the silver on his boots. I mean, we're going to go nuts with this Agrax Earth Shade all over this guy. Just in every little area. And we just kind of let it settle in. We just got to keep watch for the pooling. It's okay. It's kind of pooling up on this. The I'm going to call this a squig hide here that he's wearing. I'm going to do a little bit of a swoop over his leather piece there. I don't know if you can see that real well. Then we'll you know, shade his loincloth here. This bone piece on the front again so it's not so white. Shade those boots. They've definitely got some dirt on them from somewhere, you know. And so this is doing two things. I mentioned dirt, and I mentioned uh, kind of depth. And so one, it's going to make it look, you know, not so clean, which if you're going for something like an orc is uh, imperative, right? You don't want your orcs to look too clean. I'm going to leave this, this bone plate not too shaded, but I'm giving it some shading there. I like that, you know, that teal. I don't want it to go too crazy. But I'm going to shade the little bone color bracelet he's got on. i got to shade his gun a little bit. Now you can, if you want to, for the guns, uh, you can switch over to a shade called Nuln Oil or a Army Painter uh, Dark Tone. It's like a black, and that shades up metal really nicely. I use that when I want the metal to look clean. This is an arc. His metal's not clean. It's just not. And so we're going to keep on going with him here. Painting that on. Really getting it on there. Oh yeah, now we're cooking. Look at that. Now we're cooking on that gun there. It's nice and dirty. So, so there we go. Oh, we got to get the front of his squig hide here. And then I think he's pretty good. And... The nice thing about this is you can go back and shade areas that you missed. The thing that's harder to do is if you have too much pooling somewhere to later uh, kind of pull it off. And so that's what I'm going around and looking for right now is like here, see quite a bit of pooling in the, in the weapon. That's fine. That's going to look great. It's going to look like it's dingy and icky and maybe that, you know, saw blade just doesn't spin anymore on his on his gun there. You know, looking at here, I might add a little bit more to the back of his pants. They look like they just need a little bit more to make sure I get that spike there. There's no big pools on his, um, his shoulder pad. That green's all drying up pretty nicely. And there we go. There's our shaded model. And so, you'll notice, you know, uh, maybe it did a little something. Uh, maybe it's, it's kind of subtle. Subtle is okay. Subtle is okay, but I think it's not as subtle as you might think. If we compare this guy here, you see this guy over here, he's a big, shiny, clean guy. Look at that depth that it's given, you know, to the guy on the other side here, you know, with his gun and his, and his pants and that skin, too. Even as it's still kind of wet, it's going to dry almost to look kind of like what it is now. And so, oh, his skin color has changed a little bit. He's still this really light skin dork. There's just a little bit more interesting. I think you're going to find this is a great method to kind of step up your miniatures just ever so, just enough, just enough to be noticeable. And so if you're looking to kind of take your painting to the next level, you know, this is, this is me just putting colors on a guy, you know, where I think they should go, right? And then this is taking that, I'm going to try to grab them somewhere where it's not so wet with the shade. This is, a little bit of shade on my finger. Uh, this is, you know, taking that and, and adding some depth. You can paint in the depth yourself, then you can do all sorts of like highlighting and stuff. Not me. This guy's ready to go. He's, you know, painted, he's shaded or, or washed. Same thing, uh, really. I mean, there may be a technical difference to somebody, but not to me. He's done. He's ready to get on the table. I'm going to throw a base on him. 
and you know he's ready to go. Oh, and some dry brush on the, the squig hide, and he's ready to go. This guy, he needs a coat of wash, but I'm not going to do him in this video, and also I need to put some uh, blue contrast paint over that silver to make kind of like a shiny, uh, scaly hide thing that he's wearing there too first, so he's got a little bit more work to do, but You'll see uh, some pictures. Of, you want to see some pictures of these painted guys. Best thing to do is uh, follow the Instagram. The link is down in the description to the Instagram page, Orange Llama Studios, on Instagram. Check that out. That's uh, that's me. So that's these models from these videos. That's me there on Instagram, and I'd love to share those with you. So hop on over there. Let me know if you have questions or what you want to see more of for these little short painting tutorials. And take care. Thanks for watching.